Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be creating a quick and easy stencil layering birthday card as well as a coordinating envelope. So something that I have been really trying to concentrate on in my personal card making is making sure that there is either something stamped inside of my card. I'm not doing that today. There's a lot of sentiment on the front and or making sure I have a coordinating envelope. So we're gonna be doing a very quick and easy coordinating envelope as well as birthday card. Sometimes you just really need to be able to make something super fast. And layering stencils are one of the best things you can use for that. The new layering stencils, these are layering flowers from the Simon Says Stamp Happy and Joyful release are amazing. I love this stencil set. I'm gonna take some carnation ink and we're going to ink up the flowers in this first layer with the ink. I'm gonna be using a couple of different color combinations today. All positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp. They blend beautifully, they apply beautifully through these stencils. I'm using the smaller size blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp to do my ink blending. There is only one stencil in this set that I am using multiple colors on and I will show you that as we come to that. Um, other than that, you can really use like one color per stencil if you want to, or if you want to, you know, go out um, and create or use multiple colors like on this stencil. I think that would be amazing as well. I would definitely use a smaller size blending brush for that. Now, I did go into a couple of the flowers and take a little bit of the peony color of ink and blend a little of that in, but really, I don't know that I need to. I can go and add the contrast color here in a bit. I realized just now, I was like, oh yes, the this one of the stencils, I can add that detail in. Let's go ahead and do our second flower panel. You'll notice I am mostly lining this up in the bottom left corner of my cardstock. I did start with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of Nina heavyweight cardstock here, and I'm going to trim it down at the end to four by five and a quarter. Next, I'm using melon and cantaloupe. I absolutely love this orange color combination. I sometimes find it a little hard to find orange or pink for that matter. Both of these color combinations that I really like and both of these are super, super good. So that is a little melon. I am gonna take the cantaloupe and go in and some of the little um, like circles, I'm going to darken a bit with my blending brush before we move on to the third stencil. Pop that up and move it out of the way. It's looking pretty. Let's take our third stencil. This one is the only one that you may have to do a little bit of adjustment to. So I'm going to again use peony and cantaloupe, my darker colors of ink, and I'm gonna go in and add that contrast color to flower centers and also maybe like some little circles and things on this stencil. If you have some of like, I would say the waffle flower shader brushes, or even like an Altenew, the little mini shader brushes, shading brushes they have, or a Q-tip would probably work here as well. Something small like that to add color to the flower centers, that would probably have been easier. I just already had my blending brush out and it had ink on it, so I didn't, but I will tell you that would be easier because when you go to do the greenery for the stems and leaves and the rest of the images on here, I really don't wanna pick up the darker color of ink like I started and I was like, oh, that's gonna be a problem. So I ended up removing my stencil and wiping it clean Keep in mind when I am done stenciling, I always wash my stencils with like some warm water, sometimes soapy water, depending on if the ink comes off right away or not, and then set them in a stencil drying rack to dry. Um, 
but I just wiped it off with a microfiber cloth so that I wasn't picking up so much of that excess pink or orange ink. And I could really go in and be a little bit more aggressive with my ink blending for all of the green pieces. When doing a big panel like this, I really don't want to cover it up with a ton of embellishment or greeting. And we're going to be using my favorite hack today, which is vellum, where it is going to cover a good portion of the panel, but you still see through it to all the beautiful design in the background. Now we're going, we're using a combination of Spring, Dublin, and Lucky Simons has stamped positively saturated ink. This is definitely going to give a brighter type of look for any of our greenery and pieces here. I absolutely love it. Very springy. And that was our last panel. When you remove it, look at the background, you guys. Instant custom pattern paper background. Some other ideas is to do something exactly like this, but start with a um, colored cardstock, a pale yellow, pale pink, pale blue, or mint. For the coordinating envelope, I'm taking a Simon Says Stamp white envelope. Your best results are going to be with a smooth white envelope, something that is not um, metallic. And I am using this inside little A2 masks. In the center of my envelope, I lined it up with the new T-square ruler from Simon Says Stamp. And I've left the mask in place. And we're simply going to follow basically the same system as before. And we are going to ink up each stencil. You'll notice I've not cleaned them. I didn't secure that stencil to my envelope. You could, I would suggest Pixie Spray or some creative type of um, tape underneath if you could, you know, roll it up or something to stick that down. I was living on the edge and I didn't even secure it. Uh, we're going to go in with our other stencils and we're simply going to do exactly what we did before, but that masking stencil underneath will prevent you from stenciling where you're going to put the address, which will make it a lot easier to see the address on a decorative envelope. This is a lot more decorative than what I usually do, but I wanted it to uh, have a lot of floral on it. This was super fun to create. I could see doing a bunch of these. If you don't have masking stencils, that is totally fine. Die cut a rectangle out of um, a post-it or use a post-it, just trim it down to size. Uh, you could use either washi tape, you could you know, put some washi tape in that section. Anything that is going to protect your envelope from the stenciling. There's a lot of different ways to achieve this. This was just my easy way. You can see I also decided not to clean my stencil. I'm being super careful. This is called Nicole being lazy. I'm just trying to avoid my darker colors of ink. And then of course going in with the big leaf for the finishing touch. Oh my goodness, it's looking so pretty. I'm really, really excited to show you the envelope. I'm really excited to use this envelope. I think it will be very fun to make it out. I, I know I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this in another video recently that I had mailed out some cards to my Patreon members and some of the cards had coordinating envelopes when I went and grabbed them. And it really reminded me and inspired me to get back to making coordinating envelopes because they are beautiful and I loved making those out. When I peel away our stencil and our mask, look how amazing this is. 
Let's just knock that off and we have a perfect little spot for the address. It matches our background perfectly. Now that our stenciling is all done, we are ready to finish the our project so i die cut some vellum using one of the brand new a2 marquee dies if you have the slimline marquees that came out i would want to say like a year and a half ago maybe now they are one of my favorites for slimline style cards i love that there's a2 size ones now you can stitch through that outline if you want to or it just gives a great contrast color through those little holes lots of fun ways to use this it is a a really really great die set a nice basic we're gonna use the birthday wishes stamp set sentiments from this for our card and I'm gonna fill this I use the second largest a2 marquee die to die cut my vellum and I am going to stamp and emboss in white it's going to be very subtle if you want your sentiments to show up more I would suggest maybe gold or silver if you'd like I really wanted I like white. I even like when it's kind of more subtle, which is the look I was going for here. We are going to be using Happy Birthday Wishes and many more. That's what I lined up first. I am going to go back and also add the line, It's Your Day to Shine, above that. I really want to fill this space. Is this where that marquee die is going to go on our background panel? No, it's not. I just left it in my Misty. I'm using the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool to prep my vellum first. This is an anti-static tool. It's going to help your embossing powder stick just to the embossed words and not elsewhere. I absolutely love this powder tool. It is really, really good. I am stamping the sentiments there. I know it's hard to see. We're going to grab some white embossing powder. I had, unfortunately, the fan on in my office. It was really warm when I was uh, stamping this, and so it kind of splattered on my desk. I hate when that happens. Had to get my little uh, handheld vacuum and clean that up. I am going to use my heat tool then to emboss my greeting to help keep my vellum from curling up. I did heat both the front and the back of the vellum panel and look at that white embossing on vellum. This is one of my all-time favorite looks and this is, as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of my all-time favorite hacks for when you have something beautiful going on in the background, whether you stamped or you colored or you stenciled like I did today and you don't want to cover it all up. So sorry about my head. I had to get that lined up and it was not lining up the way I wanted it to. And I'm going to add that last little row of text. Now, if you want, you can add some additional stamping inside the card. I mentioned a little earlier in the video, I opted not to today, even though that's something I'm trying to do more of because I've got so many sentiments going on on the front. I really didn't have a sentiment that I thought I needed to add in the center or on the inside, pardon me, of my card. I am finishing with one teeny tiny little pink heart. I of course had to add a heart to my card today. I added happy birthday from the stamp set to the flap of my card to finish off the design. And that is it, you guys. I made this card an envelope in less than 30 minutes. So if you are looking for a quick, easy idea, I hope this inspires you. I have listed and linked the products used in today's video underneath the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to have you over there as part of our community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and please be sure to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you guys so very much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.